Hello ladies and gentlemen, Big Daddy Top Hat here. Over the years on this channel, one of my personal favourite feats has been managing to create deep dive retrospectives covering every single official Golden Axe title ever released. Hell, I even made a video covering the cancelled 2013 entry in the series, which Sega would later rechristen Golden Axed. The franchise has had many ups and downs, with all sorts of gameplay formats being experimented with, but most people will be in agreement that the series is best remembered as an old school 2D side scrolling beat em up. While later official games have rather stupidly strayed away from what made Golden Axe so popular in the first place, a group of passionate fans of the old favourites would get together to develop the sort of Golden Axe title that the world has been crying out for for so long. So without further ado, let's discuss this absolutely amazing effort and why you need to make some time to give this quality game a whirl. This ladies and gentlemen is the story of Golden Axe Myth, Golden Axe as it should be, yeah. When it comes to beat em ups published by Sega, two franchises stand head and shoulders above all others, Golden Axe and of course Streets of Rage. While the first game in each of these respective franchises were developed using the exact same game engine, moving forward these two iconic series would tread very different paths. Streets of Rage would function as a three part trilogy, with fans chomping at the bit for a fourth instalment in this belt scrolling chronology for 26 years with Streets of Rage 4 eventually answering fans' long-term prayers. Golden Axe fans, on the other hand, have never really been given the same opportunity to miss the series, as rather than stopping making Golden Axe games when they got a bit stale or refined in the beat em up formula, the franchise would try to reinvent itself over and over again, eventually resulting in the embarrassing abomination that was Golden Axe Beast Rider. Yuck. While these franchises went on to take very different paths from one another, during the long intermission waiting for Streets of Rage 4 or a classic style new Golden Axe that still never surfaced, communities of fans would get together to bring to life what Sega seemed to be refusing to do. On the Streets of Rage side of things, many would point to a title known as Streets of Rage Remake as the apex of these fan efforts. Arguably the closest thing to a Streets of Rage 4 before there was a Streets of Rage 4. Other awesome Streets of Rage fan projects were created in Open Bore, the ultimate royalty free sprite based side scrolling gaming engine, which we have already covered to death on here. Open Bore would serve as the engine in which was used to create the greatest Golden Axe fan project of all time, one of which offers so many cool bells and whistles, if you didn't know much about the franchise, then you could easily mistake this for an official game. According to Hardcore Gaming 101, this gem of a game was developed by a small team of devoted fans who live in Argentina. This title that runs in the open source of Beats of Rage engine was created to function as an unofficial chronological prequel to the Golden Axe beat em ups that we all know and love. While various efforts have been made to create new Golden Axe games using open bore, what separates this one from the pack so drastically is the fact that it contains totally original artwork that was all created from scratch. If you are familiar with open board games, then you will know that games like this are on the rare side, as the majority of open board titles simply just recycle assets from other games. The fact that all of the sprite work and backgrounds were created specifically for this game is one of the key features that makes this one feel so highly authentic. Back in 2011 when this game was unleashed on the world, the Golden Axe Myth team would boast of a game that like in Golden Axe of old, the goal of their game is to retrieve the axe, fighting your way through 16 different locations with the help of 4 main protagonists and a hidden character who joins the party in later stages. These playable characters consist of Barbarian Axe Battler, Amazon Tyrus Flair, Dwarf Gilius Thunderhead, and rather surprisingly, Bloody Death Adder. Yes, THE Death Adder, who serves as the main antagonist in many of the official games. The plot outlined by the team describes a story whereby the Empire of the Joined Lands, which have stood as a symbol of wealth and power for centuries, is now under threat due to an evil creeping into the land. 
This evil has crept into the heart of the Empire, and the Golden Axe has been stolen. The four best warriors of the whole realm have taken up arms in pursuit of this sinister enemy. In doing so, the Council has given the foursome elemental magic to aid them with the great dangers they have to face. They must retrieve the Golden Axe at all costs. The story of Golden Axe myth is told through an introduction, cutscenes right through to a full-on ending, all in all sufficiently delivering a cohesive experience which very much feels like a proper game. After progressing past the game's introductory scenes and choosing your fighters, we are obviously transported straight into side-scrolling beat-em-up heaven. Instantly, you will feel like you are playing the new official Golden Axe belt scroller that we never got. This title's visuals are just so freaking impressive for a fan offering, presenting graphics more reminiscent of something like King of Fighters rather than 1989's Golden Axe. I guess this is rather fitting really, especially when we consider that the original Beats of Rage game featured SNK assets, so stylistically I feel the game functions as a great tribute to both Golden Axe and Open Boar simultaneously. This in turn gives the game a sort of anime vibe to it, a refreshing change from the graphics from the classics that most certainly took a lot more western influences. As you can see from just looking at the first stage, action starts out in a rich green forest that only further emphasises the beauty of the game, with all subsequent stages receiving just as much love, care and attention as the next. But before I continue to gush about the elegant look of the game, I guess we should begin to touch on the gameplay. Like in the classics from the series, the playable fighters all have their own strengths and weaknesses that make each character feel a bit different to players. Thankfully, Golden Axe Myth provides plenty of opportunity to experiment, as every time we lose a couple of lives, we have the opportunity to try playing as someone else. Speaking of playing as different characters, I must admit my mind felt blown somewhat to be able to play as Death Adder, who in this game at the beginning is simply known as Adder, and is yet to wear a terrifying mask either. Thinking about it, all this raises another question, are Death Adder and Black Adder related? I'll leave that one for you to ponder in the comment section. As for the combat in this game, taking out foes can often feel very satisfying. This in part is due to the game's splattery blood effects and rhythmic gushing noises every time one manages to slash a foe. The title has a great tempo to it, making action feel tight. Speaking of the action, a simple double tap allows our heroes to run and perform the classic Golden Axe barge attack. Pouncing on enemies this way can not only be great fun, but it often allows for devastating damage to be inflicted on unsuspecting foes. Rideable steeds make a return too, many of which are based on beasts that can be rode in previous games. Some of these though are absolutely mahoosive, such as these golems that take up most of the playfield. In fact, since I imagine you would like the truth about this game, if I'm going to be in any way critical of the gameplay, the beautiful sprites on occasion sometimes feel almost too big making the gameplay feel a tad claustrophobic at points. I certainly do not have the technical expertise to have any idea how complex a process it would be, but a 16x9 version of the game rather than being restricted to 4x3 could do this one wonders, bringing this awesome experience up yet another notch. This has already been done with Streets of Rage Remake, so I'd adore to see Golden Axe Nif receive the same treatment. Regardless of this, Golden Axe Nif is simply awesome, bringing back many classic staples of the franchise with a new coat of paint. This includes the glorious experience of kicking goblin things in the head to collect magic pots to increase one's magic meter. Like Golden Axe Evolved, this allows us to summon devastating forces that can serve great purpose when used in critical moments such as dealing with boss battles. Further from this, points and money can be accumulated to gain extra lives and upgrades can be collected to increase attack and defense power. In addition to these features, each player has an aggro meter that slowly fills up as attacks are executed. When this meter is filled, players begin flashing red and gain temporary additional power. Players can also double jump, which is useful in combat and for crossing ravines, with there being enough inputs to combine to unleash all sorts of attack combinations. No one can argue that there is not a lot of layers to this ambitious fan project. 
Speaking of ambition, the game doesn't simply have one route to play through like with most other classic beat-em-ups, but instead this one takes a leaf out of Golden Axe 3's playbook, offering us branching paths. At the end of certain stages, players can choose which direction to head in next, meaning that if gamers want the true full Golden Axe NIF experience, then they need to play through the game multiple times to be able to play each unique stage. Another element that this game provides that i failed to touch on so far is this game's music, with there being plenty of rearrangements of the classic tracks that helped make Golden Axe such a memorable beloved game in the first place. I had the pleasure of playing through the game with one of my best friends Ryan, and as much as we loved our Golden Axe Myth playthrough, one thing that frustrated us, particularly Ryan, was with how enemies in this game tend to sneak off screen a lot, then proceed to unleash off screen attacks unsuspectingly. This was by far the most frustrating element of the game, but a problem that is far from unique to this Golden Axe Myth, and certainly not a big enough issue, in my opinion, to break the game. Speaking of issues, we were also mildly perturbed by some of the in-game text-based cutscenes that would often break the flow of play at times, whereby we were thoroughly enjoying things. I am all for story in games, but personally I don't feel that it should ever need to break the flow of play. As a heavy spoiler alert with regards to this game's story, or possibly not a spoiler at all if you know Death Adder is one of the franchise's most significant villains, a cutscene at the end of the game explains that Death Adder, overwhelmed by a powerful and evil spirit, never gave the axe to the sanctuary. Instead, he rallied a new army of evil creatures and put the people of the Empire under slavery. Axe battler, Gilius Thunderhead and Tyrus Flair discovered that Death Hadder had their relatives executed, and they prepare to fight once again together. A rather grim conclusion if you ask me, but at least one that is in fitting with the beginning of the official canon. Still past this point, there is one final battle, where you fight in the Inferno to close off the game completely, and as a bonus treat, players are rewarded with unlocking Death Adder in his classic mask form. Nice. Further to all of this, the game contains a duel mode, where players must run a gauntlet against various sets of enemies, and apparently Kronos from Golden Axe 3 is also an unlockable in here somewhere, so yet another reason for me to continue to explore this game in my downtime. Overall, despite having flaws here and there, Golden Axe Myth provides an excellent fan effort that deeply deserves celebrating. We have been waiting for Sega to publish a Golden Axe game like this for years, to no avail. So, to instead get a game like this from fans, with artwork that has been created from scratch, was a surprise to be sure, but a welcome one. This may be a fan game, but Golden Axe Myth? More like Golden Axe, it's still real to me, damn it. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, that was the story of Golden Axe Myth, the ultimate Golden Axe fan project. Like many of you watching at home, I still dream of a day whereby Sega work with a company like the Dotemu to release a new side-scrolling beat-em-up Golden Axe game. But for now, Myth certainly provides us with the closest thing to such a dream. If you enjoyed this video, I have covered plenty of fan games in the past on here, including some awesome Double Dragon, Streets of Rage and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan projects. So as a special treat for today, I've prepared a new playlist collating all of these videos for you to go back and check out. Long live the hardworking people who make these amazing fan offerings. Thank you so bloody much for making these a reality. Speaking of people to thank, I would also like to thank the fantastic little bunch of people who help inspire me to get my ass in gear and work my hardest to produce the most engaging content possible. I would simply be nothing without the generous support a few provide me with via Patreon. So special thank yous go out to Ben Haradine, Carl Johnson, Hero Paula Lopez, Johnny Holly, Corey Imar Senior, Run Dinched, Evan Border, Azur Arkai, Ego, Jordan Durant, Ian Boyle, Nick Daniels, Prince Azana, Computer Man, House of a Ted, Matthew Langtree, Matt Fowle, Steve, Justin Wang, Hermes Gonzalez, Man Shovel, Sang He, Langston Miller, Flaming Renee, TOG Driver, Lewis Viant, John Bates, David Ball, Antonio Rodriguez, Synth Spaces, Punk Toast, and everybody else who backs what I do over on the Patreon platform. Thank you very much. Yeah. Cheerio.